to the uh, Tuesday, June 14th, uh, uh, stakeholder, District 6 stakeholder meeting uh, co-hosted by the Alliance for Bear District 6, the Alexander Tennis Association, the North American Business Association, the Tennis Association, Coalition of San Francisco, and Tip Top Market. Um, we're at the uh, Alexander Residence uh, Community Room, and the first item on the agenda, my name is Michael Nolte, I'm the uh, Executive Director of the Alliance, and the first thing we have on the agenda is introductions, so I'll go to my right here. I'm Marvis Phillips, Vice President, Parliamentarian, who will be taking care of the land use chair and legislative efforts. And I live upstairs. Hi, uh, I'm Diana Sokolov with the San Francisco Planning Department. Okay. Hi, Robert. Cap Cadillac. Robert from uh, Cap Cadillac. Yeah. Could you just got say, hey, uh, Susan? Okay, Susan Bryan. Uh, treasurer, videographer, resident of Tenderloin. Okay, then you. <laughs> Me? Yeah. yeah. Oh dear, we're gonna have you. So. Okay. Hey, I'm Ken Fisher. I'm the founder of St. Francis Village. Okay, thank you. Right now. Okay, uh, Denise, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Bryan. I'm the TV producer at Bayback. Area Video Coalition, I'm the Hardy Home Club, and the Canvas Advocacy Group. Thank you. And your friend? Oh, we're checking in? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, my name is Gilbert. I'm a disabled veteran, and I'm also a member. All right. Cool. Even yeah. though my, my payment's in arrears, so I'll take some money. That's, that's not an issue. You're okay. All right. In the mail. We welcome everybody, regardless, as long as they can sit down and keep the chairs warm, that's all we care about. Uh, 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 the uh, ground rules are on the back page of the agenda. Uh, basically, we ask everybody to be uh, positive, emphasize uh, being positive, speak responsible, and try not to interrupt the uh, speaker. Uh, and there's other, uh, we'll probably have door prizes today, and uh, so that would apply. And so there's uh, no heckling or name calling to the speakers. That's happened before, so, so I had to put it in. Uh, okay, so uh, next item is adoption of the agenda. Is there any additions to the agenda? Yep. Have you looked at the agenda, Denise? Before you go, uh, we have we have other business. So if you see something that's not there, we can deal with it later. I was very interested in the triple C meeting. We also have other, uh, we also have some more. Uh, yes, we homeless and camping. Uh, Susan, could you take care of that thing, whatever it's done? What? Got it. Okay. Sorry. Well, there was a bug going. Uh, <laughs> there was a bug going your way. I saw him in my peripheral yeah, vision. I was like, yeah. hmm. You for, oh, I hope you didn't come out uh, of my bag. <laughs> oh my okay, well, we, have, we, have a, we have two other meetings up while okay. we're starting at time. Okay. Um, so then uh, we will uh, have a motion to adopt. I have I a motion. Is there a second? I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? All those, uh, the motion carries. Uh, um, okay, the next item is uh, donation cans. <coughs> Um, our membership is uh, is uh, based on donations. We don't receive any money from the city. Uh, uh, so how we uh, generate our, our organization, keeping it going, is through uh, donations. Uh, we have an online website, uh, www.apd6.org, where people can uh, use their credit card, uh, as well as uh, uh, we get membership, uh, we get donations at the meetings and or membership dues. Uh, Susan? Yes. The new faces here, why don't you give them uh, uh, just the new faces? No, those aren't new faces. Okay. Um, and, uh, okay, we'll move on. So, that uh, just remind everybody to keep their membership current um, so we can keep on uh, operating. 
Okay, so uh, executive committee report. Um, the uh, the executive director went to uh, Small Business Week, and we uh, participated in the events there. Uh, there was a social, and we did attend a couple other events throughout the month, uh, representing the organization um, and uh, mingling with uh, people in the community and getting input about various items. We also attended the uh, street fair that took place uh, on uh, over the weekend, on Saturday, Eight. Sunday, or Saturday. Eight Street Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Eight yeah. Street Fair. No, 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 no. This is on Turf. Oh, Turf. There was a bunch of them. Okay. There was also one in Union Square. There was two over the weekend on Union Square. I only went to one of those. But uh, you know, I could be busy going to lots of stuff if I wanted to. But now I can only try to stick to what's in this neighborhood. So, um, all right. So that leads me to um, the a representative here from uh, 2060 Folsom Street. <laughs> Just walk right in. <laughs> we got the wrong address. Well, at least you're here. That's yeah, all that matters. <laughs> uh, could you? Do uh, you have to set up? Or, yeah. For well, then we'll move on to the next one. And we can uh, get you. Uh, okay. It takes time for you. To, so we move on to you, Thomas uh, You're ready for me. Yes, we're ready for you. So you you got it by default. All right. For being the first one here <laughs> and set up. Been a lot of tents that have kind of been erupting 
um, I'm friends with a woman who's actually crowdfunding that uh, effort to provide tents, which has become kind of a controversial issue. Um, but uh, it's great that David's stepping up and saying, hey, listen, it's, it's time for the city to think about real solutions to this, uh, because what we're seeing here is just uh, untenable. Um, so. so just to, uh, you know, there's a lot of history around homelessness. I'd say it's probably been predominantly in San Francisco for about the last 30 years. Um, I think it's interesting to kind of take a look at uh, what I believe Newsom started in around 2004 and he called the 10 year plan. Um, and his estimation was that he could get rid of homelessness in 10 years and they approached it strategically and they, they implemented a lot of different policies. Um, interestingly, uh, they said they had this approach which was like, hey, listen, it's actually, um, it, the math adds up, it's a lot cheaper for us to just pay to house our residents in permanent housing than it is to continue to treat them on the street. Uh, and I'll talk about another project that's actually done that successfully. That's been their plan, they just haven't been able to execute on it for a variety of different reasons. So from this graph, you can see that homelessness has actually kind of stayed steady over the last uh, 15 years. Um, with you know between 5,000 and uh, 8,000 people on the streets, the city spends about 165 million dollars uh, a year a year on homelessness. Um, the interesting thing is, in the past 10 years, we've housed 11,000 people, and we've used the Homeward Bound program to send about 8,000 of those home. So you know, over the last 10 years, this program where we're spending this money has gotten us. Uh, you know, permanent housing for about 20,000 uh, people living on the streets of San Francisco, which is, you know, no small feat. Uh, I just want to take you through some statistics from the point in time count just to get a sense of uh, the landscape of homelessness here in San Francisco. Um, I thought this was interesting just to kind of get a sense of uh, how it's changing. Uh, and then you can see how many are sheltered and unsheltered. So, there's, there's roughly, it roughly breaks down to about half, so you have about uh, 3,000 people who are sleeping and living on the streets and about 3,000 who are uh, in shelter, the shelter system. So this is really interesting to me uh, because it's kind of a, a myth to debunk, which is that most homeless people in San Francisco aren't residents. Uh, in fact, 71 people, 71% of people in San Francisco who are homeless are actually, uh, been, have been living are from San Francisco, and about 50% of them have been living in San Francisco for 10 years. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of quickly just show what it looks like in terms of reasons why people are homeless. Job loss, alcohol and drug use, addiction, uh, arguments with family, and divorce and separation. I threw this in because it shows District 6, which uh, stands out pretty clearly. Uh, so, 4, 4, 000, 4, 4,100, we're almost 4,200 um, of the sheltered and unsheltered um, homeless folks are in District 6, which kind of blows all the other districts out of the water. Obstacles to obtaining employment. So I put this in here because I think it's really interesting that having, uh, not having a permanent address is such a key issue and something that I've heard come up again and again and I'm going to speak to that later, so I just wanted to kind of call it out. Uh, health conditions, so a lot of these are what leads to what I'm going to be talking about in a little bit about um, people who are chronically homeless. So some of the most severe cases of homelessness, and uh, in my estimation, the issues that need to kind of be dealt with first are around um, people who have uh, some of these more serious issues. Uh, so you can see kind of how it breaks out in terms of PTSD and veterans and um, you know, psychiatric conditions and physical disabilities and chronic health problems, um, which is, again, just interesting to understanding the landscape. Uh, so we can see a lot of people are uh, sleeping outside uh, as well as in shelters. So this became really interesting and started to inform the direction that I was taking to, which is that 80% uh, of homeless folks uh, on the street are kind of in this transitional phase. So again, it's another subset that we felt like we could uh, offer this as a solution 
and say like, okay, well, what if we provided transitional housing, would there actually be a need for it? And when you look at the, the breakout, you realize there's actually a pretty high need for this short-term, in-term supported housing. So that kind of got us thinking. I'm struggling to see. Yeah, is that because I'm standing in the way or uh, because yes. it's kind of small? It, I, I, Let's see if I can, is that better? That, that works. Cool. All right. So one of the other things that I wanted to kind of just talk about was this idea that the shelter system, I think, is kind of broken. So I think there's a real need. I've talked to and done a lot of interviews with folks who have, you know, kind of severe safety concerns. And in fact, a lot of folks that I've talked to actually choose to sleep on the streets uh, over staying in the shelter system. Uh, and all that aside, we only have one, um, for every five homeless folks, there's only one shelter spot available. Uh, so that's clearly an issue too. Um, so uh, one of the other things about the shelter system is it, there's really not supported services. So a lot of the folks who are in the shelter system, uh, when they come out of the shelter at the end of the evening, or, or in the morning the next day rather, there's, there's not supported services to help them kind of transition. And that's also become uh, an issue that, you know, is part of the system failure that uh, I've seen and hope to address. So I'm not sure if, uh, show of hands, how many people have heard of the uh, Navigation Center? Awesome. Okay, cool. Wow, so there's a fairly The one fairly on important. Stevenson, right? I'm sorry? On Stevenson Street? Uh, no, it's on Mission between 14th and 15th. Oh, that was it. Yeah, it's that old school. Uh, so I spent about six months there doing an ethnography, interviewing folks, uh, became friendly with their executive director, Julie, and she kind of put out a bunch of reports that I thought were fascinating. It was highly successful. So this graph, which is really hard to read uh, on the left, is basically just saying that 83% um, of folks that went into the navigation center had a successful exit. They left and went into uh, some kind of uh, permanent housing. So really great success rate. Um, they, one of the reasons for that is they all have personal um, support case managers who help them now nav literally navigation system. Uh, the cool thing about the navigation center that is different than the shelter system is it has three keys, pets, partners, and possessions. So that's kind of an innovation. Uh, the one thing that's kind of missing that I'll again talk about later is this idea of privacy and something that it actually became somewhat of a problem. One of the reasons that folks got kicked out just because of a lot of tensions that arose because of people sleeping in these kind of clustered group rooms. Uh, the other thing with the Navigation Center, uh, not to be a naysayer, I think it's great. I'm excited to hear about more of them, but it's, it's also been really expensive. Um, in fact, almost twice the amount of what uh, the, the kind of current system uh, offers. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, innovation. Uh, I think that this is a really interesting example. This is the Salt Lake City example. Salt Lake City uh, was in the news recently because they're, uh, they basically were touted as moving all of their homeless folks into permanent housing because they did the math and the math said it's actually cheaper to just give them permanent housing. The issue here in San Francisco is housing is a whole lot more expensive. So that's not really uh, an option for us. Um, but what this study kind of uh, taught me was that one of the most important things was, um, and, and as evidenced by this case, they still have 14,000 homeless people in, in the state of Utah, but they cleared up almost all of the chronic homelessness. So that was a really big um, kind of approach to saying, like, let's tackle this like core subset, these individuals who aren't just transitioning in and transitioning out. And that's something that we'll see here in San Francisco too. There's always kind of people that fall in hard times or get evicted, they're homeless for a few months, and then they land on their feet or they use their support system and they kind of get back into permanent housing. Whereas chronic, the chronic homeless, are they're just out of luck. They have no options. And that has been what's making it really difficult for um, us to provide solutions. This is just this idea of like, how do we approach that issue? Um, so Utah did it well. Um, one of the solutions that, uh, well, the solution that I've come to was really well informed by this book, Ten City Urbanism. If you're interested in the issue, it's an awesome read. Uh, it, it's basically a variety of case studies uh, on Bigney Village and Opportunity Village and 
a lot of different uh, encampment communities that have emerged over the last 10 years.